As a follow-up session of the last one, uh, I also did over here, actually. Um, and it's more of uh, the next step in our experience with, uh, with Azure Web Apps. Um, it's, it's a relatively new area and we keep discovering new things and uh, um, keep discovering things that need to be changed based, uh, based upon the requirements we have for a good continuous integration implementation. So um, I will talk you through uh, a quick recap first and then we uh, hit the, uh, the, the actual blue-green uh, topic. I showed this sli la slide last time about Sidecore and Azure and um, I think it's still a great, um, a great slide explaining why you should want to go to, uh, to Azure. Um, and it actually proved to be true for quite uh, a lot, quite some, uh, quite some parts. First of all, um, uh, the speed to market is very, very cool. Uh, as a developer or a DevOps or a system engineer, you can really um, uh, spin up new environments uh, fast and quick. And uh, we uh, we already had some questions from customers that they said, "I want an extra environment this week. Is that possible?" And then we could just copy in. Uh, the, the scripts we used to, uh, to provision everything and had the extra environment running in like a few hours. Um, so that's very powerful. And the scalability is also very cool. Uh, we started out uh, using the, um, the recommended uh, uh, scaling, that's uh, S2, for most of the web apps and it proved to be uh, a little bit too small. So it was very easy to change that in our scripts or within the portal. Um, and um, uh, one remark, the pay-as-you-go uh, is very cool, but it's something to, to really keep an eye on because if you provision everything uh, with high performance, you will um, burn up quite some credits. So it's wise to, uh, to look at what you actually need per instance and per environment, and it goes for your web apps and goes for your database. Um, Probably you've seen this slide or a slide like this uh, a lot of times because it's in all of the Azure presentations. But uh, since I still get quite some questions about the Azure module or uh, Sidecore Cloud Services or my blog post on Cloud Services, I want to mention that uh, we're talking about web apps supported from 8.2 and up. Um, the current release is update 3 which you really should upgrade to because there's a lot of changes in there. And we experienced it even today that the, the, the indexing on Azure Search is, uh, imp has improved quite, uh, quite a lot since update uh, two. So we're talking about web apps, not going into the difference between the different um, um, models we have here. And um, what I presented last time was a deployment strategy that makes Azure powerful, and that is that we actually split the provisioning from the deployment and from the hosting. And you can even uh, have multiple people, uh, disciplines, managing the separate layers, the separate tiers. Um, so your developers can deploy without having to know anything about how it's been provisioned or don't have access to the keys or the credentials. And you can all separate that uh, very well. Uh, the developers actually don't have to enter the portal uh, and configure the hosting That's, uh, that could be done by system engineers. Of course you can mix and match but this is very powerful and um, this is also what we're going to look into today because um, uh, last time I explained you have two ways of handling this. You can provision once then deploy every time you have a new version and manage your hosting separately but there's also a model you could provision every time you want to deploy. So you can repeat the first two steps. And um, for uh, what we found to be uh, the best way to work with this is to provision the initial infrastructure at one time and then repeat provisioning Sidecore over that. And that's what we uh, will look into today. This is an example of a deployment and it uh, shows you the separate parts, the separate instances or services that are required to, uh, to run Sidecore. And you see that uh, with the ARM templates that we have downloaded from Sidecore, everything you see here 
will be um, will be provisioned at once, and the connections, the dependency between the different resources will also be um, um, configured in one go. And that's beautiful, but that also poses a problem that because you don't want to repeat provisioning your database once you're in production, uh, but you do want to provision your staging slots. So that's the case we, um, we have. IOM templates, for those who do not yet know them, um, it's the default Azure standard um, using JSON to provision new Sidecore or, sorry, Azure resources, and Sidecore uses this as well. Um, Sidecore delivers you some ARM templates as a starting point for your own provisioning and um, it enables you to define your whole environment, different environments you have for different customers or you can share them between customers, what we are trying to do, um, and define them in one template. Um, as I said, you can do it for initial provisioning or for continuous deployment and uh, where I Last time showed the initial provisioning, I will now show the continuous deployment. Uh, ARM templates use web deploy packages, um, Sidecore web deploy packages to be more precise, and that's just a regular web root file, um, um, file list and backpack packages to provision your file set and your databases. So what's next? after this quick introduction and last time, well, I want to work towards an ultimate continuous deployment setup. And if we want to, uh, to get an ultimate continuous deployment setup, we have to take some steps. Uh, we're going to look in what do we need for a good continuous integration setup? Uh, how can we edit and extend the provided ARM templates? And then I mean those provided by Sidecore. And what are the pitfalls or maybe black holes in the blue-green provisioning? Uh, and I think by the end of today you will know what I mean by black hole. <laughs> so, how to streamline your continuous deployment? Well, I've made a small list, uh, list uh, wish list. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to clean install every deployment based on a vanilla sidecar install. So every time I deploy, I want a clean environment, no files from previous deployments because if I remove a config file, I don't want it to be on a new deployment as well and deploying via web deploy regularly only uh, places new files. So I want a clean install. That also means I do not build up any errors or any uh, issues that, uh, um, that appear in your environment. Um, I want to keep the database content. So after I deploy it once and our customer starts working within the environment, I don't want to override the database content. I don't want to disturb the live site with the deployment process. You all can see where this is going. I want a staging slot. And um, I want the option to roll back easily. It should be, in the end, a repeatable process, process that's fully automated. So, okay, Sidecore delivers you some ARM templates, but what is actually missing in those if you have this kind of wish list? First of all, you cannot reprovision an environment. You can do it once um, and you can deploy to that environment very well, but you won't be able to delete files that are on there. Of course, there are some tricks and you can have to pee to the environment and you can use uh, um, you could other tricks as well to remove files, uh, maybe from Visual Studio Team Services, but um, I think you should not go there. And it's not an automatic process. Um, it doesn't provision staging slots. So um, I think it, um, ideally you want those within your initial script as well. Um, and it doesn't tell you how to reprovision without overriding your database content. <coughs> so if you, do, if you use the side default cycle script, it just sets up a new environment every time you run them. So if you uh, go and take a look at what the steps, um, uh, what steps are needed. Uh, first, um, we want to roll out the infrastructure. So no sidecore stuff, only the infrastructure. Uh, you need a SQL Server, you need Azure Search, you need Application Insights, you need a Reddish cache. It's all in the ARM template of Sidecore, but you don't want to install Sidecore yet because uh, this is 
something, infrastructure, you want to do only once. So if you separate it, you can do it only once and you can repeat the other script. The next step is that we want to provision a vanilla sidecar install into a staging slot and we want to install databases here because we do not have an environment yet. And the third step is we are actually going to repeat this step. So it's the same script but without the databases and we need a different web deploy package for that. Sidecar so provisions those web deploy packages for you but they contain a database so we're going to strip them out. And uh, the first, first okay, come on. The fourth step is deploying your solution over the staging slot when you're ready. Um, and if you do this, um, you have two initial steps, and these steps can be um, repeated over and over. And because you always deploy to the staging slot and swap afterwards, you are always deploying without uh, disturbing any live visitors. So if I would make a, a schema or uh, some images that work better than text, I think, uh, what we do is uh, we provision the infrastructure. Everything you see right there is created, but if you start your web application, it doesn't contain Sidecore. This is just a regular web app. Empty web app, empty databases. Second step, the vanilla Sidecore install would install Sidecore in my staging slot. Uh, leave this slot like it is and uh, um, populate the databases with default cycle content. Then, this is not actually needed normally, but for the demo it's, it's easier. We swap and you see that this slot uh, will be empty. And then we reprovision, as I call it. And what that does is um, the slot that was installed with the default Azure uh, web app now gets wiped, so it's clean again, and then Sidecar will be installed, but it doesn't install the database. So it keeps the same content. And then you are go going to deploy your own code and content over that and changes in your, um, in your slot, and you can warm up your, your application, and that's just regular Sidecar stuff, you can, um, Azure stuff, and you can swap afterwards if you're ready. Uh, you can run uh, warm-up scripts, you can test, you can even do performance tests on the second one, but will be tricky because they're on the same hosting plan. So uh, for the uh, Azure system engineers over here, uh, that will uh, be um, noticeable in your uh, performance of the live app as well because shared resources. This slide is um, a slide that uh, is created by, uh, by Microsoft on how they think we, uh, from si uh, as a Sidecar implementation partner, should provision our, uh, um, our environment using blue-green deployment. And um, it's more or less the same as I told, um, but in a different, uh, uh, different type of slide. It uses the Sidecar web deploy packages. You can use cargo payloads. I will explain that later on. Uh, your own code, so you have to combine those. That will create uh, artifacts. Uh, those web deploy packages will be deployed into a pre-production slot or a staging slot, if you like. Um, and uh, from one to seven are the steps required to deploy. Actually, there's one more thing in this slide that I didn't mention yet. Um, if you deploy into a staging slot, you would still share the same database. So if you put on new content, your production slot will also be updated with new cycle content. And to prevent that from happening, you could actually duplicate the web database. That's a small Azure command. It's, um, it's really, really fast. And um, if you, and that's why on the right, uh, top right, it says freeze. If you, um, agree on a content freeze with your content editors, you would be able to duplicate the web database and tie the connection string of the staging slot to the uh, second database. And then you could install in your master, which is still shared, so that's why you shouldn't um, have content editors working on that environment, because if they publish, it would go to the um, uh, current environment, but that will be the old environment and it will be gone when you swap. So you'll have a second database 
you install your content via Unicorn, for example, on your master, you publish to the new web database, and then you have a full version of the old and of the new site versions running next to each other with their own web database. And the moment you swap, the connection strings are uh, transferred as well, so the databases stick to the same environment as they are right now. And, um, and you will be live instantly. The old slot will be still be there with the old database, and um, you can, if something goes wrong, you can swap back and you still have your old published content. So this is an ideal scenario of, um, of blue-green deploying. It is a bit more complex though because your connection string has to be separated from your configuration and have to be put in a, a configuration slot settings. Um, but it's, um, I think it's a very uh, a nice uh, schema. Um, there's one pitfall over here, uh, discovered by um, uh, one of the guys we discussed this with, and that is your indexing. Um, as your search indexes your master database, so the moment you put on new content in your master database, um, your index will be updated on Azure Search. And if you, for example, list all the uh, news items based on an index, um, the, the, the old website will already list the new items coming from the index. But if you click on them, they won't be in the, in the database because databases are separated. And this is still an issue I don't have an answer for. So that's one of the black holes. Um, um, Azure Search does not have some staging option as far as I know. Um, so yeah, still something we're figuring out. Um, and the other one could be that what is not mentioned in this picture is the reporting uh, database and reporting uh, server. If you have like four servers, the full setup, content management, content delivery, reporting and processing, your content management will point to the reporting via an URL and it's in your configuration. So you should make that a slot setting as well or duplicate your databases. But that's something we're, uh, we're still fig figuring out, but, but I think it's good to mention though. So to be able to do this, we're going to customize the ARM templates delivered by Sitecore. We're going to split the infrastructure and the MS deploy part. We will use output parameters from ARM because if we have two or more templates, they have the same parameters and in the second script, I need to know what the first script created in terms of passwords and such. So we need to transfer them from one script to the other. Um, we're going to add staging slots and uh, we're going to upgrade the minimum SKUs because, um, SKUs because they are configured by, uh, and Psycho uses the basic um, SKU and that's too small. You can't use staging slots in that. And the last step, which is quite a big one, is we're going to create databaseless Sitecore web deploy packages. The web deploy packages delivered by Sitecore, SCWDPs, uh, have to be stripped from their databases to reprovision without overwriting the database. So, first, I'm going to demo how to split the files. I'm not going to show extensively because you can download the scripts from my GitHub account afterwards. The exact same scripts I've tested and used to provision, so you can do it yourself and you can cherry pick what you like from them. Uh, but I, I will show um, what I have changed. Um, we'll start with the single setup. Um, Sitecore delivers an XP0 single setup, which is a single server instance, and delivers an XP full setup, which is for XP1 to, to XP5, and it contains content management delivery, processing, and reporting. Um, it doesn't, Sitecore does not provide uh, um, what I call the double setup with content management and content delivery. The, I hope it now still works. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Um, it does not provide a double setup with um, 
with content management and content delivery split, but the reporting and the processing combined on the uh, content management. So I created it myself and I also share this script. But I will start with single because that's the easiest one. Uh, as you can see, I've created now uh, three PowerShell scripts that just uh, start the, the right ARM template. And I will dive into the ARM template first. I use Visual Studio Code to edit my JSON files. I think it's the easiest tool for doing that because um, you can easily uh, fold down sections um, and um, yeah, it just it really works well with JSON, I think. Um, these are the two templates. I'm going to show you them in this mode. Um, so ARM templates do take a while to get the hang of them, understand how they are built up, but actually it's not all that difficult. You need to just get acquainted with how they're built up and then you can edit them manually as well. You can generate them from your portal, uh, but in this case I, um, I just manually edited them. You first have some um, uh, variables that are populated with parameters. The parameters are over here and you can actually send the parameter from PowerShell to the ARM template. So you, in, an, in a separate file I have all the parameter settings and I will populate them in the, um, uh, in the PowerShell script. Um, we'll not go over all of them because it's quite a long list. Um, but then you get to the resources and the resources just explain what they are going to create. They will create a server farm um, and um, which is a server farm. So sometimes the new terms, the marketing terms of, of Azure are different from the actual scripts uh, used because it's the initial name and it, it wasn't changed over time. So uh, sites is actually web apps, which started out as uh, sites and uh, server farm actually is referring to a hosting plan, how they call it right now. Um, but th this will all become familiar when you start doing it. And what you see is that I, in the infra, I'm not going to update it right now. In the infra script, I kept the server farm. So this is the edited ARM template from Sitecore. I kept the server farm, the sites, um, but then I added some things. You can add app settings over here. Um, and here I added a slot. Um, for some reason, it doesn't recognize slot, but it works perfectly well. And um, be sure that every section contains a depends on, a dependency within the ARM template. When you're going to edit the ARM template, you should edit the dependencies as well. Um, you should strip out what you do not use. Um, so I've created a slot, and the slot is called single staging. Um, why it is called single staging? Um, and my site is called, where, I, where it is, where it is. Um, okay, it, it'll come further on, but my uh, site is also called staging. So the staging slot URL will actually have, which you will see um, a few moments later, will actually be some link, something like single, single staging, but the uh, single staging slot, as mentioned right here, will also show up as a resource in Azure and when you do not name your staging slot other than staging and you have like uh, multiple hosting plans you will see a whole list of staging, staging, staging and you can't distinguish them from each other anymore. So I've created a staging slot that's called single staging and that's for my single setup and it's just the slot configuration there's no deploy in it whatsoever so without the setting uh, you will not have Sitecore, but that's on purpose. Then I, you have the SQL Server, and I left this all exactly the same as Sitecore did. Your databases um, just creates the, the database only, no content in it. Uh, the web database, and finally the search service, which is Azure Search, uh, Application Insights, and this normally is the end of your ARM template. I stripped out MS Deploy, which is in the other template I will show in a minute. 
then what you can do, which is very powerful, you can add a section outputs, and um, you can put in any variable. You can just copy them one one on one, or you can also um, calculate new values. So for the second script that doesn't create the database, I have to connect to the database to populate it. So I need to know the full qualified uh, name. And that's what I uh, uh, copied here into a variable called dbserver fully qualified. And that's some uh, parameter I'm going to use in the second script. We need that. Um, and then there's uh, all the list of the output parameters. If you run this and you name your deployment, you can go to Azure um, and you go to your resource group after your deployment, of course, and there's deployments and it'll just show you the deployment you did and you can click into it and you're going to see all the output parameters you've used here. So this is very handy. It's a, you, you put it in your script and it'll appear here and you can pick up those values in any other automated script after that. So this will be stored persistently as long as the resource group keeps uh, existing. Then moving on to the second script, starts with the same variables, um, a little less parameters because I stripped out what I didn't use anymore. And um, what you see here, same uh, site reference, same slot reference, but only the reference, uh, depending on each other, and then the MS deploy. Originally, this part is also in the, in the first template, so this is what I stripped out of it. And what I changed, and, and this is quite some work, but what I changed is the connection strings uh, normally are built up within here, and now I refer to an earlier deployment called Signcore Infra, oh, excuse me, um, to an earlier deployment, and I refer to the output value I've shown you, and then to the fully quiet value. So you see here that you can um, change the default connection string to referring to the output parameters. And by doing this, I have split it and can first run the infra script, with a, with, which will provision the infrastructure only, and then I can deploy Sidecore. The infra is something we're going to run once only. The MS deploy is also run once, but also used for reprovisioning. It's the same ARM template, only the parameters are different, and I will show you that. Um, first of all, I have the parameter template for the infra. It's uh, stripped out only the things we need. Of course, these are all demo credentials, so will not be uh, up and running anymore after this presentation, but I, I want to show you how it works, so I, I needed to include those. Um, it uh, contains the connection strings, the SQL Server, but doesn't contain any site or stuff. This is run once. And then I have the MS deploy parameter file. And um, this also contains the link to the web deploy package. And if you're going to look at the name, this is the original name by Sidecore, ending on single SCWDP. The last one, the repo redeploy parameter file, is exactly the same uh, d despite one thing, and that's the NoDB extension. I duplicated the SCWDP package and uh, strip the database from it, and I'm pointing to that download to reprovision. So what I'm doing from my PowerShell is first I run the infra, then I run MS deploy, and then I run the redeploy, which is exactly the same ARM template, but with a different input parameter for the Sonic web deploy package. So um, that's that's all. <laughs> Um, I'll put a li uh, there's a link on the end of the slides and you can, you, you can have the slides and you can have the, uh, uh, the ARAM scripts, but then you see what I did and what the difference with the, the Sonic template is. 
Okay, so let's continue. Uh, because I mentioned that uh, we need a databaseless web deploy package. Uh, you can download the one containing the vanilla database, but you have to strip the database out of the web deploy package. Yes. Um, and you can do that uh, using MS Deploy, actually. And this is something that wasn't mentioned. I learned it uh, while working on it and speaking to people from Microsoft and Sitecore. So I think it's a very valuable step to know how you do this. Um, MS Deploy can be used to deploy to a server or to any other target. But you can also deploy from, an, from a zip archive to another zip archive. Uh, you can actually deploy a source to a new source and doing some operations on it. And the MS Deploy tool has the uh, ability to skip the DB full SQL and, and uh, DB DAC for FX um, uh, parameters. And this will strip out your database of the Sitecore web deploy package. Um, and what you have to do is within that SCWDP is a parameters.xml file and it contains all the parameters it needs. And you have to take that file out of it, look at all the input parameters, and then you're going to invoke MS Deploy with those skip object name DB full SQL and uh, DB DACFX, and it will strip them out. But you also need all the additional parameters that is, are required by this package. And for, for the fun of it, I just put it on the screen. That's this little command. <laughs> and it contains all the credentials as well. And again, fake credentials. Um, <laughs> and it contains all, all this. And um, it would be different per environment, per customer, per role. And it's very bad. So we can do better than that. Actually, first of all, Real config values doesn't have to be in the package because we're going to populate them with the ARM template anyway. So it can be fake values. And secondly, we don't want them there because we want to reuse the package. You only want to do this once per customer, for example. Uh, for security reasons, you don't want them in there and they're going to be overwritten. So we are going to use PowerShell uh, to, uh, to automate this. Uh, this is an example script, actually works on my GitHub as well. And what that does is um, it uh, opens up the parameter file, loops through all the um, content, all the parameters, and then on the right it puts just default stuff in the parameter file, invokes them, creates the package on the far right, and then you have a databaseless web deploy package. I will now show that to you. Um, so I have the script, strip db. Going to open it, that's the script I showed in my slide. And it will populate everything with temp value except from the license XML which is also replaced and the, um, the IP addresses because it needs to, to be um, uh, an IP address. And then it invokes it. When you run this, I'll get this one. This is the original package by Sitecore, and it, it's quite easy to understand what is going on. I have a content folder over here, and it contains my web root, the vanilla web root we know all from Sitecore. When I go back to the root of the package, I see SQL script and backpacks containing the format and the data of my database. When I have run this PowerShell script, I end up with this package. and it doesn't contain any database stuff anymore. So when we run the exact same MS Deploy script as we did before, it will now reprovision over the slot, keeping the database intact. And that's exactly what we want. So and I'm going to continue my presentation. And then oh, I have to, is it still working? OK. Um, Yes, so deploy time. Um, how we are going to deploy? Um, we want to, uh, first of all, reprovision, always reprovision using the uh, MS Deployer ARM and the databaseless package. Um, and then we are going to deploy to the staging slot using uh, Visual Studio, for example. 
Then you go to test and warm up your site, do everything you want, and afterwards you can swap. Uh, within Visual Studio, which I find quite easy to use, uh, Visual Studio Team Services, you can just uh, connect to a subscription to an app service and you can um, select deploy to slot and then it deploys into your slot you've created with the ARM template. One more thing and that's cargo payload packages. I'm not sure if you already heard about it but um, within Azure uh, you actually do not want to um, uh, to use XML transforms anymore to, 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 um, to make your different servers um, having different configurations uh, because you want one artifact deployed to all environments at once. So it's better to use cargo payload packages um, uh, for the sake of time and, 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 and talking way too long. I'm not going into this, but you should know they exist. Uh, Sidecar uses cargo payload packages as well to create the different <coughs> roles. The full, database, uh, the full setup has the uh, content management delivery reporting and processing roles and that's four different Sidecar web deploy packages and the, the difference is created by cargo payload packages with, which are also a kind of XML transforms placed on top of, uh, of the default uh, Sidecar installation and you can use the Azure Toolkit from Sidecore to create those and you can add your own configuration uh, to those uh, packages to get a base installation and for example you can say okay let's put unicorn which I always use in my SCWDP packages in the exact configuration I want and uh, you can go to, um, uh, uh, to, to the blog of Bas Leiter because he did uh, a quite an interesting article about how this works and how you could use it in your environment and you can even use this on your uh, on-premises environment as well. It's actually not tied to, to deploying to Azure, um, but that it's aimed at Azure, um, however. So, um, what are the <coughs> tips, tricks and pitfalls and what could go wrong? Because there's still some things, I already mentioned them, uh, but the first one I didn't mention yet and that is, that is please secure your environment. If you just go and upload your uh, web deploy packages to a blob storage and everyone could download them. Uh, it's not allowed by Sidecore because <coughs> you, you can't distribute the, uh, the Sidecore uh, code and DLL uh, assemblies. Um, but you also, if, if, if there might end up any credentials uh, end up in your packages, you do not want people to be able to download them. So you can uh, rather easily use um, shared access signatures, w one slide of that added to the presentation in a second and um, uh, you should use IP security to your test and acceptance environment <coughs> and what I did is I, uh, the um, scripts from Sitecore contain IP security for your content management role in the full setup and I just copied these settings to the single setup because the single setup is often used uh, in, in our case for, uh, for the test and the acceptance environment and you can just immediately provision your IP security within the same script as well. So it's already configured when you roll out. And one thing not, um, um, not mentioned in my scripts or um, blog that will be published is the key vault. I think it's a whole different topic, but you can use Azure Key Vault to store your keys and passwords. And with that, your PowerShell scripts will obtain the credentials from Key Vault and uh, use them on the go. So they will not be stored anywhere else than in the Key Vault and they will not be accessed by developers and only by, for example, the system engineer. So uh, you can get, get a good separation of concern over there. SAS so, um, is uh, something you can do to, um, to secure your blob downloads and it's very easy. You can go to shared access signature within your container configuration and you select the, the things you want. You actually only have to select object and read to be able to download and then you create um, uh, a time that you want this to be uh, available, generate the key and you just you get a, a, um, a query parameter list and you just concatenate them to the download URL and it works and it's secured. So only uh, if you have these 
uh, parameters, which is a very long string, a very long token, then you can download and use this, uh, this web deploy package. So important to do. Um, if you want to troubleshoot, you can add uh, um, SCM to the URL, um, which you also will see when you go through the portal. Uh, and you can actually browse through your files, you can edit them, which you should not do, but for debugging purposes, it could be useful. Um, and um, you can execute PowerShell scripts on your machine, so um, you don't have to redeploy all over again. But once again, actually only use this to view what's going on or FTP into your uh, web deploy um, web app, which also can be done. That's that that can be very useful for troubleshooting. The pitfalls are uh, the event queue issue. Um, when you are deploying blue green you have two content management servers and uh, both the content management servers will put events in your event queue. That can cause issues. So uh, there's a trick and I've written a blog about this a few months back, Al also included the link, uh, what, what you can do to prevent this. Uh, indexing is something I already mentioned. So your Azure search will start re-indexing based upon the new content. So if you use two databases on the web, please uh, bear in mind that your uh, index will be updated already. And the content stop is something I don't like in the blue-green scenario. And still, I don't have an answer for that, but um, the idea behind continuous deployments is that you can deploy like three times a day. And if you have to call your content editors three times a day, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be quite disturbing. So I'm going to round up. Um, one more thing, a cycle will come with an ARM update very quickly. It's not published yet, um, but it will contain several things I have shown, but it will also contain things I did not do yet. Um, it will contain nested templates, with, which I, I didn't do, but it, it, it cuts down the template, the ARM template, in even smaller pieces and uses nesting to run them all. So that's a very powerful and good thing. It, it also splits infra and application, so that's maybe a little bit different than I have done it, but that's more or less the same. And it will contain module support via add-ons. So um, uh, 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 Wolfram, uh, uh, Web Forms for Marketeers, is, um, is done via an add-on, and it will be supported by them. Um, also very powerful. But the staging and the database-less reprovisioning, which is very, uh, I think it's required to do blue-green, it's not in there yet, may come in a future update, I don't know, but therefore you can check my, uh, my repository. And uh, lastly, always use them as a boilerplate, so don't use them for production right away. Um, because I will share these slides, and here you can find some blog posts. Mention again, the first one about Azure is deprecated because it's about cloud services. Um, there's an introductory, uh, introduction on uh, Azure Web Apps, uh, a more comprehensive introduction, and this presentation will also be blocked about, I hope, in a few days. And um, then I have, the, uh, have some tips about uh, automating via PowerShell and uh, the, uh, the event queue issue I mentioned. So that's, uh, that's handy. This is the link of the ARM templates and script I've shown you which you can already download, they're already live. And um, uh, please uh, keep an eye on my blog because I will, uh, I will share uh, what I've told you today. And that's it, that was my presentation. Thank you.